Hey guys, welcome back to the Comp Heist Guy podcast. My name is Gavin, and I gotta be honest, guys, I'm a little nervous because I got some pretty talented people with me today who are. I'm a little starstruck because I've, I'm a big fan of The Wind and the Reckoning, and I just love the story of The Wind and the Reckoning. And to have the director and then two of the main actors from The Wind and the, Reck- um, the, Wind and the Reckoning here today, I'm just kind of like blown away. So, without further ado, let me introduce to you guys who I have on today. So, um, I have the director of The Wind and the Reckoning, David Cunningham. Um, actress who played P. Ilani on The Wind of the Reckoning, who also <laughs> is an actress for Finding Ohana on Netflix, Lindsay Watson, and I have the actor who played Ko'o Lau, legendary actor who's also acted on Doogie Kami Aloha, uh, Mulan, Lilo and Stitch. He's also played Bruce Lee, uh, Mr. Jason Scott Lee. Please give them a lot, round of applause. <laughs> Um, thank you guys for coming on today. I'm, I'm super, super honored. I already said that earlier, but I'm super honored again to, to be able to talk to you guys about The Wind and the Reckoning because it's such an iconic movie, especially in today's age and especially for uh, today's audiences, especially because we've been making a push for diversity and a film like this is so important for diversity. So um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having us. So um, I want to start off with David. So when the idea of making this film based on P. Ilani's memoir, Kamo Olalo, Oya Io O Kaluai Ko'olau, was presented to you, what was your initial reaction and what did you do to approach this story in order to give it the proper respect it deserved? Well, it's been a long journey. I first heard about this story through um, one of our creative partners, John Fusco. And uh, we were working on my first studio movie together. And he asked me if I'd ever heard the story of Kotlal. This was 20 years ago. And um, I was embarrassed because being from Hawaii and hadn't heard it. And John comes out of uh, the Western genre, but he also has a real passion for indigenous storytelling. You know, he did Young Guns 1 and 2 and Hidalgo and Thunderheart. And and um, over the years, we became close friends, and he would come through Hawaii and stay for a month at a time. And in 2013, we started getting serious about um, trying to develop it. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. the the big eureka that we had that really poured fuel on the fire, so to speak, was when we found P. Ilani's book, because it wasn't translated until the early 2000s into English. And um, once we found that, we were able to kind of pivot and really dive into the soul of what this story is about, because we were initially working with other publications mm-hmm. and people that weren't eyewitnesses. And once we found her book, who was there, um, that is, became our compass. And so it was just a thrill to, to, yeah, engage with that material and the words that you hear Lindsay say are, are the words of Pete Ilani. And, um, it was just a real honor. And then early on, um, I just felt in my heart, the right thing to do for this Hawaiian movie is to do it in Holelo, Hawaii. And, um, Conceptually, that sounded, you know, not too difficult. I had done a, a project in the Amazon where I worked with all these different tribes and we worked with their languages. And it was just so authentic and, and, and yeah, it just helped, helped the story land. And I thought, hey, well, we should, we should kind of pay respects to the language and the culture. And that began the journey and something that these two had to, uh, actually fulfill so easy for me enough to say let's do it they gotta pull them <laughs> uh how important was it to to get a hawaii based casting crew because that's something that's you know especially for hawaii films uh in general or hawaii filmmakers they're trying to really support people from the island and and really try to give them um the opportunities so for yourself 
how was it like just getting a, a full team together from Hawaii? Uh, it's super critical and, you know, some context, you know, this is my fourth movie to make in the islands. And um, typically we get a lot of projects that come here that are, are big projects and they come for the backdrops and the, the beautiful locations, which is great. But they also typically bring a lot of uh, people from the mainland. And mm -hmm. we had the privilege, really, because we, we were, it was during the lockdown. Nobody was working in the state. So we were able to ask around who was available and who was crazy enough to come make a movie where we all went to this off-the-grid ranch and lived and worked together. Mm -hmm. And we, we got a 100% Hawaii crew, and I think the best in the islands, and was just a, a real privilege. And then to answer the question about cast, um, we were calling around trying to find the right ones. You know, Jason and I have been talking about this project for years, and two of our producers had just worked with Lindsay on Finding Ohana, and they were like, you got to check out Lindsay, this mm -hmm. Maui girl that, you know, is, is just killing it. And, you know, our first time we, we read with her, I was completely blown away. And then it was a matter of trying to find the right kind of combinations um, around Jason and, and Lindsay that, were, that, that was the next kind of challenge at hand. So we're very proud that this is very much a Hawaii project. And um, the production company is the project is owned by a hawaii company mm -hmm. and um yeah so we're we're thrilled yeah that's super incredible i i really like that whole aspect of really keeping everything local based and i mean you guys created an amazing film something that's very emotional to um a lot of people everybody i ask about it I mean, they also, they cried. I almost cried. I'll be honest. I, I was close. <laughs> I'm pretty strong, man. I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm strong will, but, you know, I, was, I felt it, especially at the end. I was like, man, this is such a powerful scene. Like, that was crazy. I think that's when everybody was like, yeah, we, they all started crying. <laughs> so, um, but it, it's, it's so amazing what you guys accomplished. So, uh, I want to I wanna talk to um, Jason and Lindsay real quick. So, how difficult was it learning to speak Hawaiian for this film? And how impactful was it that the majority of this film was spoken in Hawaiian? We'll start off with Jason first. Um, you know, at first I was up for the challenge and, and, and it was all like game on. And I was very excited. And then I started working with the Kumu. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we started getting into the dialogue. And at first I thought, oh, you know, it's like two, three scenes. <laughs> uh, you know, it, that's what it seemed like. I mean, that, that's kind of what I was kind of mm -hmm. given at first. And then we started getting more into it. And then it was like, wait a minute. This is like almost the whole movie. <laughs> and it was like, then it started getting like, oh, shoot. It's like, wait a minute. It's like, and then we started doing all the uh, the training for <clears throat> your, your dialect and, and your, you know, how to shape your mouth and your tongue towards getting the right sound and, and then I was like, oh my God, this is, this is huge. This is a huge, huge task. And it's like, <laughs> and not just to get the right sound and then get the right, you know, cadence and all that stuff. But then to, on top of that, you got to act it. You know, mm -hmm. I, I got to look like I know what I'm, I'm understanding when Lindsay's feeding me mm -hmm. uh, the Olelo. And, uh, and then that was like, okay, wow, this is like third person out. I got tricky. I got to look at myself this way. And then mm -hmm. I got to, you know, play this way and and uh it was just scary it was scary to the point where i called david and i said you know i i think you should find a native speaker or or, or f someone who's fluent mm. because i said i wasn't sure it's was like i want to be on my toes you know when i do a project when i get into a a, a character in a film mm -hmm. i want to be like on the top of the hill skiing downhill when I get in, when I start filming, mm -hmm. I don't want to be like climbing up the hill trying to find myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so, and then that's what kind of happened. I was like in the reverse because I'm always usually prepared. I was like, I'm going to prepare, 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 you know, mm -hmm. till I'm like nosebleed. So um, that was scary. And, and 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 David said, no, man, you know, it's hanging there. You know, it's like, I think we'll have another week to like uh, <laughs> uh, train. 
you know, you'll get another week for the language and because we'll, we'll push back the, uh, the Alelo scenes till later. I said, a week? It's like, God, I'm going to need like six or sevens, like at least. And just to feel comfortable, you know, like I, I would have liked, I would have liked the, 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 like the best case scenario would be like, I would have loved to like just be fluid. Mm. And just be able to like not think about anything and just kind of like be in the moment and just sing it, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, but you know, I didn't have that opportunity. And but we, you know, the the thing was that we had good teachers on board, um, and we you know they they signified to us that that we were on the right track, and and mm -hmm. and that was then you know it doesn't really put a smile on your face, but it just makes <laughs> you like feel a little more like you know like at ease. Um, so yeah, that, that was really trying. I mean, and I, you know, I, I couldn't put a sentence together before the film and I probably couldn't now because it's something, <laughs> language is something that you can practice, you have to practice, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, you know, while you're in it. So yeah. And, 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 and Lindsay and I used to have these stories on the side, just like laughing at each other because we're like, oh my God, no. did that <laughs> suck? Or what, what was that, you know, how was that? Was that okay? It was like, how did I sound? Like, <laughs> it was a lot of stress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think to piggyback off of Jason, I mean, first of all, like, Having this be done and be out there, it's it's such an honor. Uh, I mean, after all of the stress that we went through, Jason and I looked at each other and we're like, we did that. Like, mm -hmm. that was incredible to be able to learn another language that we both weren't fluent in in practically like three weeks, you know. And as Jason said, it's not just learning the language, it's learning the language and performing the language at the same time, having to understand what Jason's saying to me. So not just learning my own lines, mm -hmm. learning Jason's lines, learning Kahiao's lines. So mm -hmm. it, it was it was a lot to take on. And I mean, I'm actually really grateful that it was during COVID because we were all forced in this bubble and there was nowhere you could go, nothing you could do. You know, the property was beautiful and it was really cool, but it's not like there was much to do, no TVs to watch, mm. no cell service. Like, so all we could do is sit there and learn our lines, sit with our kumus and, and practice. So I think because of that situation that we were put in, that almost forced us to prepare even faster than, than a normal film would have been. Mm. So that, that was really stressful. But as Jason said, our kumus were excellent. They were there from the start, I mean, hours and hours hours and hours of practice and within those two weeks that we had before we prepped like so much practice so many hours of me just staring at this script like praying it would just like <laughs> implant my brain eventually <laughs> like it's just Put like you look at this yeah like you just stare at it so long and you're like this has to eventually like get in my brain right like and that's what it was for me i mean it was just over and over um and to the whole point, kind of what they started with, like how this felt for me, it was awesome, but it was so scary as a Hawaiian. Um, I was born and raised in Hawaii. I went to Kamehameha School. So that's a big undertaking for someone mm -hmm. with that background of mm -hmm. like, we all know how it is in Hawaii and we know how it is with our culture. You know, it's not something to play with and, and to go halfway on. Like if you're going to make this commitment, there's truly mm -hmm. no other feature film of this size with this much Alelo Hawaii mm -hmm. in it. So to know that we were going to be the first people to do this, that was really important to me that we were going to do it right. So I, I was right behind Jason in line questioning David saying, I don't know if you got the right person for this. <laughs> you know, like I'm, I'm so internally passionate and excited about this, but you know, I don't have the natural skill that, you know, maybe another speaker has, but David had so much confidence in us and our Kumu said so much confidence. So that, that just pushed us right through to be able to, get to that point where we believed in ourselves and we, we were able to learn it and having mm -hmm. our kumus on set like a lot of people don't know they were literally mic'd up sitting there right off a of camera listening oh, to every incredible. single line we said mm -hmm. to either give david yep or nope got to do it again mm -hmm. hey you know this is how you pronounce that or oh wrong word or wrong letter you know oh go up don't go down so a lot of you know anyone who speaks wine it's it's a really intricate language to speak mm -hmm. so to have them right there every step of the way that that really saved us because it was stressful <laughs> <laughs> i could just imagine all of you just lining up uh up to david and asking him hey are you could you get a <laughs> native speaker <laughs> i'm sorry yeah. you can't do it <laughs> but yeah, only kahio <laughs> 
honestly, you guys did a phenomenal job. I couldn't even tell that you guys struggled because it just sounded so <laughs> fluid and uh, Thank it, was, you. it was amazing. So to hear you guys say it was it was uh, really difficult. I mean, that's comforting for me because if I if I learned another language, that I'd be like, okay, I'm, especially for a magnitude of a movie like this, you know, primarily spoken in Hawaiian, that's a scary task to follow. But you guys accomplished. And then, you know. It, it, in, in, in Hawaii, you know how proud the, the native culture is here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you just you just didn't want someone tap me on the shoulder on the street going, hey, bro, you just stop. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know that, that, that's the real, right? It's like, that's I don't want to don't yep. wanna look, be looked down as, as, a, as a Hawaiian, you yep. know, as an mm -hmm. islander. Yep. And, uh, you know, people think that you, you crapped out on it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. How does it shame, bro? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you guys did a phenomenal job. And I, I want to talk about um, that quarantine process because you guys did film this in fall 2020. So you guys were on like a 50-acre ranch land and basically filmed this in... 16 days i mean for each of you can you talk about that experience of just kind of being together and and making this film in, in such a short amount of time honestly yeah um just to give some bigger context and let them jason and Lindsay share their perspective um you know everything had to go right on this film because our budget was so low and there were so many constraints. Like if we would have had one case of COVID, we would have get, we would get shut down and we don't have we didn't have the budget or insurances that would allow us to recover from that. And we were actually the first full feature, I believe, in all the island. And so we were pioneering protocols. Mm. And so there was this hovering fear that someone was gonna get sick, you know. And so we had to live together and, and be together. And like Lindsay was sharing earlier, that just kind of cleared away the distractions, you know, and anybody that committed to this project had to fully commit. Um, and I'll let Jason share about his commitment to his family. Mm. Um, but we all had to be all in. Uh, and it wasn't like, hey, I'm going to hang out on the weekends back home or go to the restaurant. There was none of that. So it really created this was focus, but it also created very quickly a bonding between cast and crew. And um, it was some really special times. And it was just such a privilege to be able to grab Lindsay and Jason and walk a few feet mm. out into mm. the forest and actually rehearse there together mm. and um, try things. And even though we didn't have much time, the little time we did have, I, I think we were good stewards of it and we, we really worked hard. So by the time the cameras were rolling, um, these guys were prepared, I mean, full on. And we weren't, we couldn't afford tons of takes. You know, we were probably averaging maybe two, two takes, three takes. Mm. And um, these guys just nailed it. Many of the most profound performances that you saw of both of these guys, that was like take one. Wow. And it was like this, <laughs> rawness and i think maybe perhaps um as an observer some of this concern that these guys had um you know they were able to translate that that emotion into something that very raw and authentic mm -hmm. and um so it was just a joy to see it come to life especially after working on the script with with john for so many years and you're trying to picture it coming out of people's mouths and what that was going to be like so it was it was a thrill seeing it come together so yeah it was a, a really special time and um i my whole family was able to work and live with me um mm. the making of this my wife was the head makeup artist so she did the leprosy and the effects and mm. mm -hmm. and uh, and more and uh, my daughters were production assistants and my son was a was an uh, a extra my cousins were in it. My, uh, <laughs> yeah, the guy that helps me with our property was in it. The papers <laughs> were in it. You know, we were grabbing everybody. So that was, that was just a little glimpse from, from my perspective. Hmm. Um, Lindsay, you can go next. Yeah, um, it was 
it was something that seemed scary that turned out to be so fun. Um, like David was saying, everyone who agreed to go there, this was in the middle of COVID, you're leaving your families, you know, you're getting tested. We got tested three times a week. Like you were putting oh, wow. yourself through it. We were on a property in the middle of nowhere with nothing around that you couldn't leave if you wanted to. So, you know, that takes a certain type of heart to agree to do that. And so everyone that came together, it was almost crazy to see how we all clicked so fast. Yeah. There, there, like I said, no distractions, no, no cell phones, no TVs, none of that stuff. So every night was campfires and eating dinner, breakfast, <laughs> lunch together. I mean, we all lived right next. It's like going to summer camp also, like, like adult <laughs> summer camp. It was almost like, and we were filming a movie at the same time. Mm. So it, it was, it was definitely an experience you're never going to get again as an actor. I mean, that was a once in a lifetime, like you might be on another COVID type set, but a set out there where you're filming, where you're living and, and you're not allowed to leave this bubble. It, it was an experience that I'm very grateful that we stuck through mm -hmm. and, and got mm -hmm. to do it all together because I mean, we all, all walked out with friends and family that I'm sure will stay with us for the rest of our life from this yeah. experience. It, it really forced you beyond regular borders and boundaries of like a regular film set when you're forced to live together. And like David said, almost that like looming fear of this sickness that's out there that's, mm -hmm. you know, killing people, you know, and we're out here braving it and, and trusting each other that we're all gonna, you know, stay safe and work together. Cause I mean, there was a red zone, yellow zone, green zone on set, which is very crazy. Oh, interesting. If, you're, if, if you were in the red zone, our, our poor hair and makeup, all those people had to be medical, like vests, gloves, mask, uh, KN95 with the like actual shield, like everything, a oh, lot, a oh. lot of protection because that was the area where the actors would have to take off their mask. Mm. Uh, so it was, it was a really intense process that again, I don't, I don't think you'll ever experience again in your life. So the fact that we all got to go through that and kind of have that double layer of like, we were stressed about the language, stressed about, you know, living out here and then stressed yeah. about the COVID virus COVID at the COVID. same time. Yeah. yeah, it was a lot going on in the fact that everyone was such a joy through the whole process. And we still had so much fun by the pool, campfires, hanging <laughs> out. It was such a cool time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then how about for you, Jason? Yeah, I, I missed a lot of the campfires because my, <laughs> my family was, is pretty young and the little yeah. ones you know, you had to get to bed early. <laughs> so <laughs> we wanted to put them, put them to sleep so I could sleep. Um, yep. Yeah, so my whole family came out, and then my my three keiki, and then and you know one the older one had to get tested, and and my wife had to get mm -hmm. tested every like three times a week, and um, but it, it was a uh, you know it was it, it for all of that like and sleeping on the floor in a little bungalow, you know, with all the the, the creatures and stuff that are at <laughs> the shoreline, yeah. you know, the uh, sea level, um, you know, I there was something really enjoyable about it because it was very fluid because I didn't have to worry about like, Oh, how am I going to get to work? You know, I hope my hope someone, the, the driver is on time or, or, mm. you know, it's like, and it's like, Oh, what's my next schedule? And then I go down and it's like, you know, I'll talk to someone who's having a sandwich, you know, in the, in the lanai and, and they're like, they're like 50 feet away. You know, it's like, it, it's all those little things that that amount to a lot because it's like oh and, and, and even if you like oh shoot my alarm didn't go off someone's there like someone's <laughs> at the door, you know because they're right there yeah. you're like, oh fantastic it's like you know it's like i missed i missed my alarm but you know they can grab me it's like mm -hmm. it, it's like, there was for that there wasn't a lot of worry i think a lot of worry was with the visionary was with david because i think it all boiled down to that kind of leadership thing Mm -hmm. Where, you know, when he was, if he was Pono and he was like, you know, really invested and, and, and committed and, and there was a caring feeling about what was going on, it just made it like really fluid for us. I mean, and, and he cared about the performances. So a lot of times he just, you know, if we were okay, we weren't freaking out. He was okay. Mm -hmm. He's, he's okay with it. Mm -hmm. You know, so, and, and all those little things all kept like adding up to, to a great experience because you know, and then, and then I don't know what, I don't know what, you know, the other actors, they're doing scenes in, in, in different parts and it's not, you know, we're, we have the time off. And so even on our time off, when it was like, you're working your, your Hawaiian language mm -hmm. and, you know, 
and um and uh you know so so for all those things yeah like Lindsay said it, it, it once in a lifetime thing and and you know and the other thing is you knew that the script had had weight mm. you know mm. this was this a real had a lot of gravitas you know that kind of feeling of of doing something of value and when in so many times in business it's it's so commercialized that you know it's like there's a certain style and kind of presentational performance that you have to do in order to fit into that kind of genre or fit into that kind of style and like this is the kind of stuff that uh, you dream of this the, the kind of the kind of film like these kind of indie films that that you dream of mm -hmm. that 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 have that 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 the rhythm and and the feeling of of, of just being there um and you know not having to put anything on um as far as performance for an actor it's just just jeweled you know it's like you don't get that you know um yeah you, you can hold out for a long time too which i have at times and, <laughs> and you just don't you wish you, you know you wish okay next one next one you think oh yeah man it's like what can i dig into next and then you you'll search for a long time before you find something of, of value mm -hmm. Uh, thank you guys for your response. That, uh, it sounds like you guys built your own community basically over there. I mean, for, I mean, yeah, like, like Lizzie was, it, it's like camping, you know what I mean? You guys basically just did a big, big camping trip together. And, um, and like Jason, like you were saying, I mean, you could just, maybe your alarm goes off like too late, but then people could just go up and <laughs> knock on your door and go, Hey, we need you right now. And then yeah. like, Yo, you're right there. So I, yeah, we <laughs> You know, a lot of a lot of things that we worry about. It's it's like you guys were in that community, that bubble, and you could just feed off of each other, in, in you know, creatively, and um, and you guys built such an amazing bond through that whole experience. So um, that's awesome. I mean, to to be able to film such a project in the short amount of time with the budget that you guys had during COVID nineteen, that is amazing simply amazing so yeah you know, you know sometimes sometimes on these films and stuff there's there's a rotten egg or something that you know that kind of puts a, 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 a you know some something in the spokes of the wheel and mm. makes it kind of i i well from my perspective i don't know what dave went through but <laughs> <laughs> i didn't feel that there was a whole lot of attitude from any of the performers or mm. i mean I, I think there was an overabundance of giving in a way mm. um, that, that people wanted to like sell you know sell the stunt or sell the you know, action or, or something, and, mm -hmm. and 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 willing to just keep going for it. Um, but that and, and that's 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 a beauty. I think you know there was a certain respect amongst I yeah. think all the players that um, you know we 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 there wasn't a whole lot of that kind of like attitude stuff yeah. being thrown around. Yeah, and just kind of going back to what both what Lindsay was saying too, and echoing Jason here is everybody was there for the right reasons. You know. Um, no one was getting a big paycheck. In fact, everybody got the same minimal amount, mm. you know, cast and crew. And I've never worked on a project where everyone agreed because, <laughs> you know, usually there's been, there's a couple of actors that take up so much of the budget and everyone just generously agreed. Um, so it wasn't a gig for financial gain. It wasn't, um, mm. yeah, it was, people were there for the right reasons and wanted to see this thing through. And, you know, as creatives, um, you know, we, it, it was a real privilege to be able to kind of like push back in the midst of this oppressive global pandemic that was happening mm -hmm. and, and use our craft and our skills to actually say something in the midst of this kind of dark shadow that was hovering. And the fact that the subject matter was about a very similar theme, you know, I think was, was quite inspiring to everybody. Mm. And so it was a thrill. And, and honestly, kind of after we made the movie, we've all been on tour together. So our, our little bubble has continued <laughs> and it's just been just <laughs> such a joy to see, um, you know, we've been in all kinds of environments together. Our families getting to know Lindsay's family and, more of Jason's family and, mm. and my family's been on the road and 
So that same spirit has continued, and it's just been nothing but a privilege, you know, just to continue to hustle. Again, no paychecks, you know, we're just out there <laughs> to get the film seen, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, it's been winging the prayer production for sure. <laughs> yeah, that, that's incredible. And, um, uh, and just to continue on, you know, I, I think that's like, you know, the heart of the movie really shines through. I think if, if anybody that watches it, they're really going to get the message. And it really came across really well. And um, speaking on that, I actually wanted to talk about one of the shots because I thought this was a really cool shot. So uh, there's a shot in the film where Koolau, um they're having like this little standoff across the, the valley and Koolau shoots uh, his gun. And um, they have this really cool like shot. I think it was a drone. Not really sure if the drone kind of flies up to the captain and then they get the shot. But uh, David, talk talk to us about that shot and how you guys um, how that came about. Yeah, I mean all that stuff is a lot of planning, and you pray that everything goes right. Mm -hmm. uh, especially you know on this kind of project, I've I've worked on some big budget ones where a shot like that, you'd have like half a day, you know, mm. to try to get it. And we were on the northern point of the island, North Kohala, which is typically very windy. Mm. And it just so happened the days we were filming, it was really calm and still. Oh. So our, our drone was able to really perform well. Mm. Um, it's also a place that's typically very rainy. And there was a drought during that time, so it was it was dry. So we, we had very little interference with, with the rain. So, yeah, so that one was basically just about preparation mm -hmm. and um, planning it out where we worked with, with Jason and Ian. Uh, Ian plays Captain McCabe. And it was important for me to do it real, like literally have – uh, Ian on one end of the cliff and Jason on the other one. So every time we were, you could actually see them both in the frame at the same time. I didn't want to do any cheats. I wanted to do it for mm -hmm. real. Mm -hmm. And then Jason had to learn that gun, which was, uh, you know, an antique replica. And he had to learn how to fire it with only two fingers. <laughs> uh -huh. And so he, he was running around for a while with his fingers taped so that he could practice all of that. And it's actually a heavy gun. Mm. Um, so it was just about planning and we essentially pieced it together where we shot the wide shots on both sides. And then we flew a drone in the same uh, direction on the same mm -hmm. parallax. And then we actually grabbed the drone and it would shove it right into <laughs> Ian's face, oh, right God. into... <laughs> Jason's face. So we didn't have any any expensive equipment. To mm. we had to we had to make it work kind of old school style. <laughs> so I'd I'd like push the camera right into Jason, and then he mm. would go back. Um, so like that, yeah. And then in editing, you have finesse it and all the rest. Mm -hmm. So, but it was it was a joy. And remember, we only had a certain amount of property that we could work in. Mm -hmm. We couldn't go, hey, there's an awesome this down the road, let's go get that. We had to work right there. Mm. And those cliffs, I only got secured two days before we shot. Oh God. And <laughs> was that, it was actually the neighbor's property. It wasn't the ranch's property, it was the neighbor's oh, property. Wow. Okay. And I was stumbling through the weeds looking for you know, where to shoot and trying to find another piece of the property because we were milking this 55 acres so much. And I came through the elephant grass and I saw those cliffs and I my jaw hit the floor. And I was like, oh, we got to <laughs> film here. So it it, uh, it was one of those experiences that just sometimes it comes together. Mm. A lot of times it doesn't, but sometimes <laughs> it does. <laughs> that Yeah, that was an amazing shot. I really... I really liked it, and I, I figured it was a drone, but the the ingenuity of it, like, it worked out. I mean, that that was a good shot. That was a really good shot. Thank you. Um, uh, what I, I got a few more questions to ask, but uh, I wanted to ask about the um, meeting the survivors from uh, Kalau Papa and then showing them this film. Um, 
talk to us about the experience. I'll, I'll start off with you, David. Yeah, and I, I, I don't want really to want to talk too much here, but um, one of the survivors, Uncle John, who's 98 years old, his niece saw the movie in Oahu. Mm. And she came up to me in the lobby at Ward Consolidated, where we met you, and said, how, how can I show, how can we show this movie to my uncle? Yet there's five remaining survivors that still live in Kalapapa. And I told her, I said, we would love to. In fact, we wanted to show it down there first, but there's all these complications to get down there. And especially with COVID, they got even more complications. Mm -hmm. And I said, all we need is Uncle John to make way. And uh, sure enough, Uncle John made way. And <laughs> We were able to take a small group down there. So it was, it was Jason, um, Akumu, um, a couple of our delegation, and, and myself were able to fly in on a very fun, <laughs> interesting <laughs> plane ride uh, <laughs> on a very windy coastline. Um, and that began a really special journey. So, uh, Jason, I don't know if you want to share about about that whole thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I had been to Kalapapa years and years ago, and uh, just going that day and seeing it again for fresh with fresh eyes, mm. and 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 going around the, that peninsula and seeing the different aspects, the different perspectives on that peninsula, which is massive, huge. I mean, there's a huge team of um, uh, national park people that run and manage that area, uh, which we met all these players and, um, and then meeting the, the patients and, um, you know, just mm -hmm. spending time with them and, and also talking to the nurses and, and the perspective <clears throat> that they have on the film um, and some of the, the language that was used for the period of that time and how that language has changed and, um, but just this, there was this one woman, uh, she was, appeared Caucasian, very, very elderly. She was in a wheelchair and she watched the movie and she's blind. She couldn't see. Mm. And uh, she listened to the whole movie while, while one of the nurses was dictating to her the visuals of what was, what was happening. And she just, at the end of it, was just overjoyed she just loved i think you know you can get it's almost like watching someone listen to an old radio show mm -hmm. you know back in the days and 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 just you, you can see in just in her aura like all the imagination that was going on about what was going on because of the the the, the sound and, and you know she can't read the subtitles so she has to only hear the olelo and you know and and, and the nurses translating you know some of the subtitles to her and it was just and then as well as meeting uncle john and he's like they you know they said oh he's 98 so we thought oh he's this old guy's gonna come up and he's gonna be like you know can't can't move and mm. this guy jumped out of his truck was standing by the was standing by the <laughs> airport he was like look at you like <laughs> checking us checking us out like wow who are these guys you know like and i was like Wow, I said, this guy's amazing. <laughs> and then you know, and then they take us back, and then and, um, and then uh, you could see, you know, he really, he's the, he really wanted to see the movie. So after he sat, I could see him sitting in the back. You know how like it's very local thing. Yeah. Like I don't want to be boosted. So he sat way in the back. And as the film was going on, when we came back to to finish the film, when the film was finishing, he was like right up front, <laughs> <It was> like <laughs> right up front by the TV. And he was like, and you could just see him, the light that came to him, mm. you know, it was just like, he was so, you know, like excited that, that this was, and it, and I think he realized it was done very, with a very good quality, you know, I think mm. with everything, the photography and the direction, you know, everything. And, and, and it's amazing to see, I love seeing the Kupuna who have such a wealth of experience under their belt, you know, mm -hmm. and years of real life. I mean, this no, this is not a, a joke kind of life down there. You know, this is real life. They they got to deal with their own generators. They got to deal with their own mm. food supply. They got to deal with a lot of stuff that most you know everyday conveniences are not not to be had. Um, so 
you can tell like I love seeing the reaction of the kupuna when they see something of of value and of worth, you know, and and, and you know, it's not it's not just entertainment, you know, and that was I think was such a great send off for us when when we did have to depart mm -hmm. was was just remembering that those 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 memories of their expressions of how you know a lot of them still got the tail end uh, of that whole experience of it being a leper colony you know and you know mm -hmm. when you're that old you know you you've been there a while mm -hmm. yeah. um so it was very touching i mean and, and you know just also the to be there and you know to see it in the film is one thing where you're standing on the pier and you're looking out over this <laughs> this ocean and the wind is howling and you know the, and, and and you see the cliffs and it's like wow it's like it's just epic you know it's just and and i, and I hope you know you, you kind of feel like gosh you know i hope the film kind of like delivers that that and communicates that kind of epic experience of, of, of that what that life was mm -hmm. Um, Uncle John was sent there in the 1940s. Jeez. So you think what he has seen and survived, World War II, you know, the Korean War, statehood, mm. all those things uh, this man has, has seen. And so, and he, Uncle John, and is one, is one of the, pretty much the chief down there. <laughs> and, uh, and he was, he, he was thrilled to, that we showed up. And um, they were all wanting to take pictures with Jason, and it was super special and precious. And we visited one of the open grave sites. There's 5,000 buried there in one mm. field, mm -hmm. right next to Father Damien's uh, grave site. And one of the aunties that's a survivor takes care of Father Damien's grave site to this day. And we stood there, and you just... You just felt that that grief, but you also felt a spirit of peace. I mean, that's what I did. Mm. And that, that there was something that happened that was these people overcame. Ultimately, they suffered and it was, it was obviously very painful and sad. But dignity was was restored and found, you know, and that's so what was important to all of us in making this movie was we wanted to show the grief. And it's almost like, you know, we've been in these so many, I lost count, but I think we, we did, Jason, Lindsay, and I, and, and a lot of the others, I think we've done around 40 events, something crazy. Mm -hmm. that we've, uh, but each time in the lobby, people want to talk. And they often want to talk to Jason, Lindsay, and Kaya, the family that represents that. And it's almost like, you know, when you go to a memorial of someone that you love that, mm -hmm. that passed away, mm -hmm. and you're there to grieve, but you're there to also celebrate a life and you're there to talk to friends and loved ones about remember this, remember that. And people are tender and people are loving. Mm -hmm. That's the vibe that we've gotten after the movie. People that have connections to the story, connections to Kalapapa. And Jason and, and Lindsay uh, were able to meet the descendants of Ko'olau and Pi'ilani wow. in Kauai. <laughs> they actually came out. And to support the film, we showed the the kids from Ni'ihau that were living um, on the boarding school in Kauai. They saw the film. That was probably the loudest performance we <laughs> had. The reaction. Best the audience film. ever. Oh yeah. my God. They, share, they, share a little bit about that, Lindsay. No, they, you know, here's the thing. We had a ton of incredible audiences across the US. I mean, mm -hmm. we took this film all the way to Boston, Indianapolis, San Diego, and bringing it back home to Hawaii was massive. But getting there on Kauai, and then, you know, you don't, it's more of an adult type film, I would say, you know, it, mm -hmm. it's not geared towards children as much. It's a very dramatic, heavy, um, you know, it, it's, it's not a film that you would expect kids to relate to. Mm -hmm. So when we had all of these speakers and, you know, having them being Olelo speakers, that was something pretty cool to have both of that. So that was kind of a tester audience to see what is it going to be like when, you know, you have Olelo speakers and that they're young, you know, this, mm -hmm. the next generation, how mm -hmm. are they going to react to this movie of something from our past? 
Oh my God. I mean, these kids were incredible, cheering, screaming, clapping. I mean, they were so interactive with the movie and it was so exciting to see that this next generation of Hawaiians were relating to this story in that way. I mean, for me, that was a big thing about telling this true story is that if this is my way to help our culture, help our history, help our future, mm -hmm. is that, you know what, this is my medium, is acting and, and filmmaking. So to put that to work and, and marry it with my culture where mm -hmm. I come from, and then hope that we do it justice so that the Hawaiian people relate to it and, and find a piece that they can connect with, uh, that that was really important to me. So to see that happening everywhere we go, no matter what, even even these Hawaiians that we found in Indianapolis <laughs> that were just like, you know, this fire sparked in them. Like you didn't even know there's probably, you didn't know there's Hawaiians in Indianapolis, but there are. <laughs> so to have them come and watch this and feel this like, you know, this this fire in their soul for this culture that some of them have lived there, some of them haven't, you know? So, you know, it's been cool to not only make a movie that you were so passionate about, but to see people feel so passionate about it, that they they want to share it. They they want people to see it because they felt so strongly, you know, from the story and everything that happened in the movie. And and like I said, bring that back to the kids in Kauai. They, they are going to be the next generation. And to see that they loved it in that way, and they're going to go and tell their friends to watch it. <laughs> we, we did something right. That's all I know. That's incredible. Okay. <laughs> um, so speaking about like widespread, uh, you know, showing the film widespread, you guys have an Indiegogo campaign right now for um, the win in the reckoning. And um, what's the importance of, of raising these funds to showcase this film worldwide? Uh, David, I'll, I'll have you uh, start off. Yeah, well, first off, we're still playing um, in a few places in, in Hawaii. So we're at the Dole mm -hmm. Cannery, still yet yeah, at Regal. Um, we're at the Palace Theater in Hilo. And I'm, I'm happy to announce that we're going to be actually reopening on the Kona side um, at Keho Regal. And um, we continue to get various requests in. So the fact that we're running now for almost three months is mm -hmm. pretty crazy. <laughs> and that we went toe to toe with Black Panther and a few theaters we actually beat Black Panther. Mm. Then we had to go toe to toe with Avatar, just <laughs> another little indigenous movie. Yeah. Uh, so it's just amazing support from the Hawaii community. The other thing we've been doing is as as Lindsay brought up, we, we've been touring we're doing the festival circuit. Mm -hmm. And it's been just an honor where we've been winning multiple awards uh boston we swept the awards uh, best choice award in san diego uh even up in alaska the anchorage film festival best best audience award mm. <laughs> you know another indigenous anyway we are proving that there that the festival audience was was enthusiastic mm -hmm. now we have to prove that there's a, a public audience in the mainland that would respond to this film and we really want to first bring it to the communities where Hawaii people live um, you know native Hawaiians also islanders anybody that come on people that call this place home mm -hmm. and you know a really sad sad statistic as of last year there's now more native Hawaiians living outside of Hawaii than inside and mm -hmm. that's not usually by choice. And so we've been asked so many times, when can we see this movie? When can we see this movie? We, we don't live in Hawaii, but we're hearing from our relatives and our friends that it's, it's, a, it's a great movie. So we are planning our flag to show the movie first in Vegas, the Ninth Island, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> middle of February. And we're needing people's support to be able to show it there. We're we're more or less, we're partnering with a nonprofit organization. So no money is going into people's pockets. This is expenses to get us there um, and and get it playing. Mm -hmm. We have some awesome sponsors like Hawaiian Airlines has gotten behind us, Island Breeze Productions, some individuals. Um, but we really need the support of anybody that loves this movie. Mm -hmm. And that's what mm -hmm. that Indiegogo account is. 
we will be good stewards of your resources, whether it's five dollars or five thousand, whatever you want to contribute, <laughs> it goes directly to opening it there. And and our goal is to then continue the tour from Vegas, San Diego, Orange County, make our way to places like Oregon and Washington, and really hit those communities and uh, celebrate this film with Hawaii people mm -hmm. and let them see it. Have, have the opportunity to see this in theaters and, and experience it together. I think mm -hmm. it's that kind of movie, you know, yeah. where yeah. experiencing it together is so key. And uh, there'll be a, a group of us traveling with the film. There'll be different actors at different times. Um, and But we, we want to um, really bring a first-class experience wherever this movie goes. And then uh, how about for... Uh you Jason and then Lindsay can go last if you guys want to chime in and add anything to that um yeah I know it's just been it's just been a, a whirlwind of, of travel and I, I you know we were so encouraged uh when I first saw the film um and I, I thought wow let, let's go support this and I dragged the family all over to these festivals <laughs> and like I'm dragging them to the airports and sitting on <laughs> long hours of flight <laughs> You know, <laughs> but um, and you know, and then, and then bringing it back home to Hawaii, it was really, really neat. Um, um, just just to hear all the the good responses that have come through from all the other festivals and some that we, uh, oh, I I wasn't able to attend, and then um, you know, and then knowing that it, it's got the legs and it, it it's got support to want to keep going to bring it this year into. Mm -hmm into the uh you know the states and stuff i think that that, that that's kind of imperative mm -hmm. with with a film like this and and even more so um you know just mainland audiences to get a historical kind of like reference point of what hawaii is and what it was and and um you know how it how that happened and um and i think it's educational um you know in, in, from that mm -hmm. standpoint mm -hmm. So, and not only the story is just just amazing and it's so relevant so you know i think it it, it dots so many eyes and, and it pushes so many buttons in, in in what we call cinema and the world of cinema mm -hmm. and and you know what they want what they want what they want to call diversity um and um or what they're what they're trying to accomplish i think it it, it just fits the bill mm -hmm. how about for you yeah Lindsay? i think I think to pack, uh, you know, to kind of back up what Jason's saying, for me, this is huge because I feel like this film is like extremely educational, not just for Hawaii, you know, I mean, the amount of Hawaiians that came to me who didn't know this story, you know, that that didn't even know any of this happened. And for me, I, I talk from that experience too. I was born and raised in Hawaii. I didn't know about this story. And what I deduced from this whole story is that this is a moment in history where the Hawaiians stood up for who they are and what they believed in and they prevailed, you know, they, they were the victors in this situation that Pi'ilani, you know, she did not give up. She, she stood strong as a strong Hawaiian woman. And I love to think that she could be this role, you know, model for these next generations and for these Hawaiians to relate to that history and, and you know, and not all the darkness and all the mm. negative side. Mm. And as Jason said, also for mainlanders that's why it's been so exciting that we already got to take this film to a few spots in the mainland especially all the way out there as boston and indianapolis mm -hmm. to see the response yeah we had hawaiians come out but we had total non-hawaiians who were just interested in learning walking walking out crying and and feeling so much like david said it's like a situation where you need to be there and and, and talk after and and mm -hmm. they're digging to to know more and they're telling me i'm gonna go home i'm gonna research mm -hmm. this and not only all of the history, but for me, the biggest cherry on top is the language. You know, that was something that scared me. And after realized this is huge, like this is massive in the world of cinema for, for our culture to know that our language, although it, it was dying off at one point, it, you know, it's come back a bit, but mm -hmm. it still has so much to grow to know that we secured this language in cinema in film that mm -hmm. it'll never die to know that 
this film can go to Africa or, or Sweden or somewhere that someone would have never had a chance to hear this language mm -hmm. and they're going to hear it now. And knowing that our film could possibly bring back a resurgence of the language, that's big to me. So so referencing the, in the Indiegogo, this is like donating any money is not just, you know, oh, a random film that, you know, you're going to give some money to like you're you're helping this movement of what this movie is, because that's what it's turned into mm -hmm. for us. It's a movement of pushing our culture, our language and sharing it with the world, educating, you know, Hawaiians, non Hawaiians, anyone, we, like we said, older generation, we've had the younger generation, everyone responds in a way that we could have never expected. So to see it now, I think that's why there's such a push for us to make sure you, indie filmmaking, there's not much money. It's it's almost crazy to me, a film of this like level uh, of this caliber with so much incredible things and so many incredible people has no money, you know? It, it's, a, <laughs> it's a weird situation that you would have never expected because these are the type of stories that you expect to have massive budgets and it didn't work out that way for us, but we're, we're making do with what we have and, and anywhere we get help to help us share this story, to get it out there, we're, we're so grateful because, you know, like I said, it, it's a movement at this point. It's not a movie anymore. It's a movement for us. So seeing everyone donate and, and help us get there. I, I too, am getting the flooded inboxes of everyone in, in the continental U.S. When can we see this? How can we see this? And and it's it's sad and it's frustrating that I can't give them a straight answer mm -hmm. because, you know, we don't have the money to get there yet. So mm -hmm. If we if we push and we get together, we'll we'll get there. And and we would love to share this story, you know, as as far as we can share this this mo'olalo, we we want to. Definitely. Uh, and Gavin, can I try, chime in on something that yeah, I forgot to say? Definitely. So definitely. there's a nonprofit called Movie to Movement, and they've committed to to basically buy out one theater each city for people from Hawaii. Wow. And they're hoping that people will step up and match that. So, wow. you know, we've already got some momentum going and uh, our Indiegogo campaign is is technically about only three or four more weeks. Um, we're just ramping it up. So it's still real manini in terms of where we're at, <laughs> but we, we, we need help. And um, as Lindsay said, there's no we don't have we've done everything ourselves like everything the posters the website the trailers everything's been done by by our our own internal team and um that's been the spirit of this whole movie and we're really hoping that hoy will get behind this and help us bring it to the continental us and any revenues for this film um, that come through are going to be forwarded on to trying to make more of these movies so this isn't going into the pockets of Hollywood. This is feeding back into making more of these kinds of projects. Mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll leave a link, especially in, um, in my caption in this video as well. And I'll be definitely sharing it so that everybody will be able to will make that big push to get that, that Indiegogo <laughs> campaign going. And then, you know, it'll be a strong finish. So great. Um, well, just to kind of wrap things up, uh, for each of you, what's next for your careers? Any future projects? Maybe you guys are maybe taking a break to, to focus on other things. What's, uh, I'll start off with you, David. What's uh, any, any, uh, anything next for you? I, you know, like all of us on this Zoom, we all have a lot of irons in the fire, and um, I'm not sure which one's going <laughs> to happen. First. I can say that we're all anxious to work together again. I am, at least, and... Um, we, we were able to capture lightning in a bottle and we'd like to give that another shot. Mm. So we're, we're kicking around some ideas. Um, and uh, fortunately, um, we we all know each other quite well now. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Jason? Um, it's been really nice having the downtime, take care of my, my, my homestead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I miss it. I miss, you know, I just, you know, it's like, I'm just one of the homebodies. Like I don't have to go anywhere, mm. but um, yeah, I, I think that the Dewey Kami Aloha show, it, it's pretty, it's very highly likely. It'll come back for a third season as it looks right mm. now. I think it, it premieres on March 31st or something on Disney plus. Is that breaking um, news? And then, uh, <laughs> yeah. Is that breaking then, news? Over <laughs> breaking news. Oh, yeah. Was I supposed to, oh, I'm not sure if I, 
Well, I, I said it. I said it. I don't know. Who knows? Can, I don't know. But and then, then uh, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, uh, there's, there's, I'm hoping to get on Lilo and Stitch. Mm. Uh, I haven't even confirmed it, but that's the live action that's going to be, you know, going on. And then, um, you know, I, I just, Valao, just talking with David and then seeing, you know, like he said, you know, it, it was such a good experience. And, um, you know, maybe try something different and maybe, mm. maybe do something period, maybe do something contemporary. I don't know. It's mm. like, you know, it's kind of wide open right now. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think wide open's the word. <laughs> I mean, we all live this creator life of you never really know where you're going next. I, I don't have a set path. Um, and acting wise, I'm always going to pursue it. And that's my main thing. But I think for me, if anything right now, uh, this year, I'm going to really focus on, uh, one music um that was something mm. i never really focused on but i'm gonna go and push on that this year and then also i, I write uh, films too so i want to focus on kind of creating awesome. some of my own films this year mm -hmm. yeah i got to work with a friend recently on a feature and that kind of ignited the fire that i was like wait this is awesome this is really what i want to do so I, I think there's going to be a lot of new paths for me this year but also sticking with acting and same as jason you know Hoping to get on some show. It's always nice to get on a show back home. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's always a, a nice, uh, happy medium for me. Awesome. Incredible. And uh, just to wrap things up, I just want to thank each of you, David, Jason, Lindsay. Thank you for coming on the show and uh, just being able to talk about The Wind and the Reckoning. Such an incredible film again. And I really hope for the best for you guys. I also want to give a huge mahalo to... Tracy and Fida, thank you so much for um, your guys' support and helping to set up this uh, Zoom call with the Wind and the Reckoning crew. Um, I also want to uh, just tell people, just support the Indiegogo campaign. It's still going on, um, especially for the rest of January and I think a few days in February. I'm not really sure. I can't remember which day it ended, but um, just supported throughout January and uh, especially the rest of the showings that are going to be coming out in uh, Regal Dole as well as uh, on the Big Island and Kauai as well. So um, I just want to end off the show as usual. I always do a compai. So uh, if you guys don't know, it's a cheers. Oh, what do you got there? You just got water? <laughs> Lindsay? Just water. Sorry. Just disappointing. <laughs> I, got, I got water too. Jason, Wait, what is Jason? I got I got back I got back pain, so this is my medicine. <laughs> Jason with the red wine. It's grape juice. It's grape juice. <laughs> yeah, grape juice. Sorry. Um, Kampai. Yeah, Kampai. This is to you guys. This is to your success for uh, the win and the reckoning, and for your future projects as well in your career and some downtime if you guys get any downtime. So, this is to you guys and your success, Kampai. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.